Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. One of the biggest questions hanging over the 2024 presidential election is, will former President Donald Trump be eligible to appear on ballots? He's the Republican frontrunner in the race, and opponents are hoping a string of federal charges against him will upend his campaign for a second term. Now a group of Trump opponents is trying another legal tactic to keep him off ballots across the country. And the strategy has its roots here in North Carolina. WRL state government reporter Will Doran dug into it, and he joins us now. Will, always good to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the legal challenges already facing Donald Trump. He's got state charges, federal charges. What impact could those have on his eligibility to run for office? Probably actually not as much as a lot of people might think. You know, normally if you're uh, a convicted felon, uh, you can't vote, um, but that doesn't necessarily block you from running for president. Uh, And there's also no indication that he would even necessarily be convicted before the election happens. Some of these cases are moving pretty quickly. The the Jack Smith January 6th one is set for trial uh, in March, uh, actually the day before uh, the primary election here in North Carolina. Um, But, you know, even if there is a conviction in that, you know, it would likely go to appeal, it would drag on. And so... The criminal charges some of Trump's critics fear wouldn't actually, you know, ban him. Now, voters could see all of those criminal charges and decide that they don't want to vote for a candidate with that history. Um, but in terms of the the legal ramifications, it wouldn't necessarily block him from being on the ballot. So obviously, many opponents are hoping that takes care of their concern. But you report that there's another group trying a different tactic. Who's the group and what's their strategy? Free Speech for the People is this Massachusetts-based group, um, and they're kind of a voting rights, anti-corruption, pro-democracy sort of group. And they believe, as do many others, that the 14th Amendment can ban Trump from being president. And we actually kind of got a preview of this uh, here in North Carolina last year, um, and we can go into that in more detail later. But a lot of their arguments are sort of based on the the North Carolina history that we have with this. And uh, they they believe that there's a clause in the U.S. Constitution that says Trump cannot be president again. Now, Trump's supporters obviously want him to stay on the ballot. What, what do they have to say about all this, it, both the, the charges against him and also this group's strategy? Well, what we've heard from a lot of Trump supporters, they just don't really believe the charges uh, in terms of the, the criminal Uh, charges against him. They think that those are being weaponized and just overblown, exaggerated. As for this other civil matter with the 14th Amendment, what we've heard uh, from Trump supporters is that it's just as undemocratic as anything that happened on January 6th, if not more, to keep him off the ballot, to deprive people of the chance to vote either for or against him. They said, you know, it needs to be up to the voters, not to the courts to decide who can even run for president. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear more about former President Donald Trump's chances in 2024. Stick around. Welcome back to the WRL Daily Download. We're talking with WRL state government reporter Will Doran about efforts to keep former President Donald Trump off ballots in the 2024 presidential election. Well, this legal strategy to keep Trump off ballots, it's not new. It it has its roots in the Civil War. That's correct. Uh, Right after the Civil War, the 14th Amendment passed. And the the main thing that it did was extend citizenship to formerly enslaved people. But the lesser known part of that amendment and what we're talking about now is this piece that says if you've engaged in an insurrection or rebellion against the United States and you have previously sworn an oath to defend the Constitution – you cannot come back into federal office. And obviously that was intended at the time to stop Confederate leaders and officers and soldiers from serving in Congress or from becoming president. But it doesn't only single out Confederates, it says anyone. And so what Trump's opponents say is that January 6th was an insurrection. It wasn't necessarily a a rebellion like the Civil War, but it was an insurrection, which they think should count under the 14th Amendment and ban uh, Trump and also others who have uh, voiced support for January 6th or were involved in January 6th from running for federal office in the future. So even though this law has been on the books 
for a long time. January 6th is the real reason why we're starting to see this now. Is that right? Correct. And like I said at the beginning of the podcast, this actually has its roots here in North Carolina. This is obviously the first time it's being tried against a presidential candidate, but we got a a preview of it last year with Madison Cawthorn. There was a very similar lawsuit trying to use the 14th Amendment to keep him off the ballot in 2022 when he was running for re-election. And the people who were behind this challenge are actually really looking closely at that a lawsuit against Cawthorn. There, were all, there was also a similar one in Georgia against Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, but it didn't really end up getting as explored by the courts as the Cawthorn one here in North Carolina did. Um, you know, the one here got all the way up to a federal appeals court, which ruled that, uh, you know, it, it's possible. It, it didn't rule that, you know, January 6th was an insurrection, but uh, it did shoot down Cawthorn's argument that it wasn't an insurrection. So it's still very much an open question, um, but there's going to be definitely some efforts coming up to explore that. Now, you spoke with the lawyer who defended him, who's one of the few lawyers to have ever defended against this strategy. What did he tell you? Yeah, uh, James Bopp, uh, he's an Indiana attorney, but he's long been involved in national conservative issues. He was a lawyer on Bush v. Gore. Uh, which people, you know, will remember from the 2000 elections. Um, he said that this is really undemocratic. You know, you can't just use the courts and the bureaucracy to say that someone shouldn't be on the ballot at all. It needs to be up to voters. And he also said, you know, this could be a slippery slope. You know, he said January 6th didn't really change anything. You know, Trump still lost the election. And so he said in the future, okay, you know, if if someone, you know, has a sit-in on the House floor like we've seen, you know, Democrats do against gun violence a few, year, uh, few years ago. They staged a sit-in, said, should they be banned from running for office because they also delayed congressional activities just like January 6th did? And, you know, he expressed fears that this could be weaponized against even really kind of minor things in the future. Now, this Massachusetts group, Free Speech for the People, how far along are they in their efforts? They've begun ramping it up. They recently sent letters to secretaries of state in a handful of states, New Hampshire, Ohio, a few others, asking them to keep Trump off the ballot. Um, In North Carolina, it's not quite that simple. We don't have one single person who's in charge of deciding who's going to be on the ballot. We've got the State Board of Elections, and there's a whole process. And this group is expecting to file some lawsuits, but those have not started yet. Do you think they'll file in North Carolina? They wouldn't tell me that, but I would be shocked if they didn't. Um, obviously, like we said, you know, North Carolina is kind of the the testing ground for this entire theory. Last year, um, I spoke with former state Supreme Court Justice Bob Orr, who was involved in that Madison Cawthorn challenge. He said he's been in touch with this group, uh, Free Speech for the People. And so I would be shocked if North Carolina wasn't part of their challenges, especially since we're, you know, an important swing state. Well, I know you'll be keeping a close eye on it and reporting on any new developments. Thanks, Will. Thank you. That's WRAL state government reporter Will Doran. For his in-depth article on this new legal strategy and for all of WRAL's election coverage, visit the NC Capital section of WRAL.com. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to the WRAL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at wrl.com newsletter.